All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Ruth. Ruth, in the first chapter, is where we'll be reading tonight. Um, Ruth, in the first chapter. All right, Ruth, chapter 1, first chapter, first verse. The Bible says, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Malon and Chilon, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah, and they came unto the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died, and she was left with her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the women and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this blessed old book that sets before us tonight, how it's been a comfort and a help to us down through the years. God, we pray that you would honor it one more time again, this time of this side of eternity with your presence. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory for on you it's bestowed. And we pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, fairly familiar verses of Scripture, uh, but we'll be approaching it hopefully from a little bit different viewpoint tonight, and that is don't leave the perfect will of the Father. If you know the will of the Father, don't move. If you understand that you're in His presence, don't take off. Now, there will be trials that come your way, not sent by the opposer, but sitting by, sent by the Lord God Himself to test if you're going to stay or if you're going to go. Now, many times I would say that we run before it's time. Uh, things get a little difficult. Things get a little hard. Things get a little trouble in the church. Oh, well, it's time to go somewhere else. And, you know, I've literally known people that went to all the churches in a certain area and still go somewhere else. And the, what, the reason that happens is they're not satisfied. And the reason that we move, and not necessarily from the church, but we move our spiritual position is because for one reason or the other, we're unsatisfied. We're not being nurtured, or more often than not, we're not eating what's available. Now, Don's had these uh, foods lately, and some of them are good, and some of them are, are a little strange, but you know what they are? They're food. May not be what you want, but they're food. Now, that's the problem with the flesh. It wants fried chicken all the time. It wants something that is tasty and meaty and good, and we don't always get that. Uh, and, and the last thing I would want you to see before we dig into the Word is God knows more what you need than we do. He knows the very message for the hour excuse me, <clears throat> he knows the word of God that needs to be read. He knows everything from the beginning. So I want you to see back in the first verse, now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled. Now, to understand the government 
of Israel. And to understand why this statement is important, you have to understand the government of Israel. Initially, it was supposed to be ruled by God Almighty and Him alone, uh, a, a theological uh, government where God is the head. And that is what one day the Lord uh, will enjoy by the merit of Jesus Christ. We will enjoy a theology where God is the center, God does the ruling, and He casts all the judgments from His throne. That's what we need today. Now, I'm glad we live in a, in a republic where we can vote and, and, and put our leaders in, but that was never the plan of God. The plan of God was that he would rule divinely and supremely. That was the reason he came down to live in the tabernacle, the wilderness tabernacle, nothing but a tent with, uh, with uh, skins over it. Why would he make his abode from the mighty heads of glory not such a little man-made thing and the reason was to rule his people. That was the reason. And then uh, the, the nature of the flesh and as Moses was going along and, and, and the rebellious nature of the flesh, if you remember the first person that really appointed judges was Moses. Because all the bickering and the, and, the, and the discrepancies of opinion and stuff among the people got to where that's all he was doing and they weren't moving forward anywhere, and so he appointed judges over them. This is the leftover of that, and the judges that he appointed. And the book of Judges has all that, uh, has all that recorded for us, and they're living very much in a less than perfect situation. You know what we live in every day is a less than perfect situation. You look at our White House, you look at all our houses of representatives, you look on the global scale, and things are in a mess. Um, don't put your trust in government. No. Don't ever put your trust in government. I don't care how good the man may appear. Listen, that's not, that, that's not our venue to be in. And so they lived in a very difficult day where it was very difficult to hear from God. No, man, no men were really preaching anymore. And the judges uh, were, were less than perfect. If you, find, uh, uh, if you uh, look at Hophni and Phinehas, that's a good example of the judges and how they could be bought off so easily. So in this troubled, difficult, spiritual time is when this comes to pass. Now... Very much so, what we would like to do when difficulty arises, we would like to leave. So there was spiritual unrest in the days of Naomi. There was very much spiritual difficulty in that place and in that time. So we see that's the first piece that causes uneasiness. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled, that there was a famine in the land. Now, on top of spiritual unrest and difficulty hearing from God, now God's people are in a famine. Now, you know, this is what I found among God's people even here in 2022. Uh, Don was talking about going down to Frank's and the shell being kind of a little bare. Now, that would get our attention. But you come down to the house of God and not hear from God, that don't get our attention, does it? That, that don't bother us a bit. And so in the days of the judges, when there was a spiritual famine on, that didn't get Elimelech's attention. But when his belly got empty, that got his attention. Now. And so we see then that we're very much the same way. And when we get hungry, spiritually and physically, we want to be on the move. And a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, you don't, uh, era, Naomi, blame, you know, get, Naomi gets blamed for this whole event that transpires, yet and still we find Ruth in the genealogy of Christ. Uh, but you know what? Who is still living when they leave the will of God? Elimelech. Now, there's one or two things happening. Naomi was running the show, or Elimelech was up to his neck into it too, and I go with the, uh, with the latter. You know what? 
man, we got a big man. And we say, hey, it ain't going to be this way. It ain't going to be this way. So I really think they were co-joined in this thing. And they very much covertly let their, directed their family, not just let them, directed their family in leaving the will of God. And we do it all the time. Just, just And we do it without even thinking almost. Yeah, we're going in this direction. You ever thought of why, uh, uh, why Pentecostalism today is so, is so prevalent? Because it feels good. Look over there and they have some lights flashing and people carrying on. You know, it looks pretty good to the flesh. Dry, dry saltine crackers down at the, uh, at the Sovereign Grace Church. It feels good. That, that's what they were experiencing, both spiritually and physically. And so Elimelech said, it's time to get out of here. Uh, don't ever move without the presence of God. Don't ever move without the leadership of the Almighty because it never works out the way that we think it might. So they're in a spiritual famine, they're in a literal famine, and their, their uh, solution was to leave. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. Now, why is that a problem? And, and when we began to look and things look a little brighter over there, things look a little bit greener, what was the chief problem with Mo the Moabites? They were idolaters. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't even know of the goodness of God. They didn't even understand. Uh, and, and they might uh, worship some kind of little trinket and had no clue that that wasn't the very, uh, song. you know, they really believed and put faith in that little statue. That's where they were going. Where would you go? You ever thought about that? Uh, where are you leading your family? What direction are you taking them? Because whether, whether we want to be cognizant of it or not, we're leading them somewhere. That's why, and the older I get, the more, the more serious I take two things. Number one is leading a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've always taken it seriously, but the older I get, the more I see what responsibility is involved in that. And the second thing that I have, uh, I, have uh, I have come to be more cautious about is receiving people into the assembly and just as much letting them go. Uh, because that's a very serious action of the church. Does it have to be done? Certainly. Should it be done lightly? Never. And, and so we see, we see that they made a cognitive decision to leave. Now, the name of the man was Elimelech. Now, that's why I think Elimelech was driving the truck, because it mentions him first. Uh, you know, uh, Naomi is a lot kind of looked, uh, uh, looked down on. But have you ever thought about this? Naomi was the survivor. The three boys died and the two boys died. Uh, Naomi was sustained. Who, who gives life? The Lord God Almighty, right? Who sustains life? The Lord God Almighty. So I don't know if she was a very good woman or not, but I know this, the Lord God spared her and she's the only one came back. And, and so despite Naomi's character, I think Elimelech at least has to get the blame uh, for them heading out from the will of God. Men, leave your homes carefully and don't head out and leave the will of God. If it's time to leave and it's the will of God to leave, good. If it's not, stay where you're at. And, and, and so we see that Elimelech uh, makes this decision and they move. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, or Sweet, and, and the name of his sons, uh, Malon and Shilion, Ephraites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. Now, I'll remind you of a separate person that has a similar history, and uh, that is Lot. Remember, the Bible says, Lot looked onto the well uh, watered plains of Jordan, and he pitched his tent in that direction. 
and then he pinched, pitched it a little closer, and he pitched it a little closer, and pretty soon he was keeping the day at a very wicked city. See, it did not happen overnight. It happened slowly. That's how the devil works. And we wake up and one morning and say, well, how did I get here? I was way over there in the will of God at one time, and now here I am by, and I don't even hear from God. They, leaving the will of God takes time. And so I want you to see that it said they abided there. You know what? What should have happened if Elimelech was in the will of God that that city would have horrified him and he'd got his wife and babies out of there. But he wasn't horrified about it. He, 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 he did it. Uh, he abided there, didn't have any problem with it. And see, what will happen is sin will consume you and sin will take you down and sin will end your life. So we see in verse 3, and Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. Now, I don't know how old the boys were at this point. Uh, I would assume they were marrying age because they married very quickly after this. Uh, so in Jewish culture, now who's in charge? It's not Naomi. Who is it? The oldest son. So now we have Elimelech out of the way, and we have Mahon in charge. So who's the responsible person to take them home now? Mahon. See, one day, you know what? What that is is personal ownership. Maybe they had to listen to their daddy while he was living, and maybe they were trying to honor who he was. But now we find that he's gone, and you have this generation of boys that never even knew where God's people were. How can people go, go back when they've never enjoyed being in the will of God? You know what? I believe we've about raised a generation today. We're talking about it at work today. People... Uh, <laughs> 20 years old, 25 and younger, listen, they just won't work. And that's, that is this situation. And, and you know why? They've never known the world. Uh, mm. I, I don't even, I'm kind of like Matthew. Matthew, when he was a little boy, he wanted to mow the grass so bad. Adam <coughs> usually mowed it. And he was wanting to mow so bad, he was about this tall. We had to tie the, the thing you engage the motor with with a string, and he pushed on the second round. And that's how he mowed grass until he was tall enough to get on to, to pull it from the top. And you know what? That's a good thing. Both my boys work. And you know why they work? They were taught to work. And, that, and, and that's the problem in this modern day wherein we live is that... Uh, they don't know it. They've not experienced. So these two men never uh, had never enjoyed the goodness of God. And Elimelech, verse 3, Elimelech, Na uh, Naomi's husband died, and she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. Mm -hmm. Now, so I want you to see the progressive nature of sin you ever thought why they did that? What, what happened uh, whenever uh, it was time for uh, uh, Isaac to marry? You remember that story? He said, you can't, Abraham said, you can't marry the heathen in this land. We're going to go all the way back home and get you a suitable woman. Mm -hmm. So was it the fact that Maon, Chilion did not know that these women weren't appropriate because you know a lot of people again get down on Naomi and I have too and, 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 and you know what Naomi should have said hey that wasn't her position she couldn't even do that if she wanted to and they certainly would not have had to listen to her and, and so we find then that these two boys probably never know and again we're preaching on the, the being in the will of God and sticking to the spot these boys had never even known it. So how could they possibly know to get back to it? 
See, it's a very important thing as the Lord's people to be in the perfect will of God and not the permissive will of God. You can, uh, you can live in the permissive will of God, but it'll take this life out of you. You'll become an old man quick. And, and, and so we find that was this situation. The boys were now in control, and they did nothing to get back to the will of God. Probably they never even knew what God's perfect will even was. And so, and they took them wives of the women of Moab, and the name of the one was Orpha. Now, I, I, I say this every time I preach this, and probably one day she'll send the law after me, but you know, Oprah Winfrey is named after that woman in the Bible. Her mom just switched those first two letters. And what was Oprah? Oprah was an, I mean, Orpha was an infidel. She did not love the things of God, and as soon as she had the opportunity, she went right back to it. See, uh, they weren't careful in selecting themselves wives, was they? You think Naomi's heart was broken? You know, when she came back, she said, don't call me sweet, call me bitter, call me Mara. You know what? You see your kids go wrong, it'll make you bitter, won't it? You see your kids doing something that you know is not good for them, not the will of God for their lives, not helping them spiritually, it will make you a bitter old man. And so we find that's the situation here. She saw them young uh, boys running off and marrying the heathen of the land uh, and, and, and involved with these women and marrying these women. And really, again, remember, she has no say in the matter according to Jewish culture. She might say, Milion, I wouldn't do that if I was you. But he did not have to listen because he was the man. And so we find that the progressive nature of sin where, where they were in the... And you know what? I'll have to say this for O. Elimelech. I don't believe he was ever in the perfect will of God to start with because if, he, if he'd been in the perfect will of God, he would not have left to start with. Right. Uh, but now we have a second generation that don't even know what the will of God is. Yeah. Think about how this country's changed since the veterans of World War II came home. They learned to drink and to soothe their conscience with alcohol, and this country has never been the same since. See, and, and now with my boys, we're five or six generations from that, especially my grandchildren. We're, we're sometimes six generations from that now. You know what the Bible says concerning stuff like that? about stuff like that, things will wax worse and worse. And, and, and so we find ourselves in a situation similar to maybe, uh, Naomi, where her children didn't even know what the perfect will of God was. Notice what it says. The one was Orpah, and the name of the other was Ruth. And they dwelled there about 10 years. Now, by this point, they probably had at least been there for 15 or 20 years. Can you imagine living 20 years out of the will of God? I know now why Naomi came, became bitter, don't you? I personally think Naomi was a saved woman simply because she, uh, either she was a saved woman or God just chose her to deliver Ruth. And I, I don't know which is true. But see, if she would enjoyed all that, she wouldn't have been bitter, would she? If she was down there rolling around and clocking like a hog does in slop, she, she'd have loved it, right? What made her bitter? I think it's because she knew what sin was and she knew what was going on, and she wanted to be back in the will of God. Otherwise, why did she go back to her homeland? Why did she go back where she knew there was uh, help to be had? So we find now, again, we're in the second generation, and uh, 
uh, people began to die. You know, uh, I will point out, there was no third generation while they were over there. You know, at one time, babies were rejoiced about, were they not? Most exciting time a family could have. And, and, and the Lord give you this brand new life to nurture and to take care of and, and to raise up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And you bring them and you bring them along and, and it's a love like it is not known. It's a blessing. You know, today it's almost looked at as a curse. But having a child given to you of the Almighty is the most wonderful, rich blessing you'll ever enjoy and it didn't happen to those two boys. And they had been married 10 years. Mm. That's something to consider, is it not? Uh, um, when Adam was born, we'd been married 21 months. And it would have been an empty 10 years without a child. So I see, I see in this position where they're abiding, God is not blessing them. Now... Maybe Moab had plenty to eat. Maybe they was eating beef and, and, and hogs and grits and, and just getting fatter every day. But God wasn't blessing them. God wasn't giving them the next generation. And then I wonder, too, if God was protecting the next generation. Because you think if Milion and Chilon were like this, what would that next one be? What, what, what would their children, the third generation in Moab, have come to? Who knows? Verse 5, And Malon and Chilion died also, both of them, and the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Now, I want to point out, I think it's very interesting, and I've never seen this before. I believe these boys died at the same time. Because it didn't say, Malon died in a space of time, Chilion died. It says, Malon and Chilion died, both of them. You know, I can't even imagine giving up one of my children. But can you imagine burying two at the same time? Mm. That, that's just unfathomable to me. It really is. But I believe Naomi experienced it. Uh, I believe Naomi, you know what? And I saw this in my own mother. It will make you bitter. It will make you bitter. This was icing on Naomi's bitter cake. And now she'd been given to bitterness. See, now she was so far from God that God began to rain judgment. That's another reason I think Naomi was a saved woman. Because, see, uh, God don't chastise those that are not his. Mm, sure. and, and, and so now we see that Naomi is alone. Now, the good news, I think, about Naomi, and again, I want you to see that possibly she was a saved woman. As soon as she could do it on her own, she was out of there. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. As soon as she could make the decision for herself and guide herself according to Jewish law as the way it should be, she was gone. She was heading back home where she knew she could get some help. You know what? When you finally realize you're out of the will of God or if you're in the need of a Savior, run to God with everything you have. Naomi wanted to be back in the will of God. Naomi wanted, it, no matter what it took, she wanted to be back in the center and the perfect will of God. And so she did it. You know, I often... Uh, <laughs> Wondered why, and I've even preached on that, why she was trying to get rid of them girls. I think it's because she didn't, she didn't want the dead weight. She knew they were idolaters. She, she knew their nature. And, and so we, uh, we see that Naomi now has lost everything, and she's ready to return home. Verse 6, Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Now, uh, she's getting that information from somewhere. They don't have the universal post 
system that we enjoy today. But she's getting, getting information from somewhere. I bet every time she saw a Jew, she ran to him. Because, see, she, she, she wanted news from home. You know what will help you keep in the will of God? Getting news from home. <laughs> getting news from the Almighty. Using that book and the Holy Ghost coming down and blessing it. Listen, that's, that, that's, that's news from home. <laughs> and, and, and you know, you ever, you ever think about the, the king and it says a hand came upon the wall. Daniel came in there and he said, yeah, I can read it. <laughs> you know what? This is a, a letter from home. Mm -hmm. That's where we need to be. We need to be in a condition where we're hearing from God. Say, Naomi is ready to return home. She heard that there was what? Bread. It wasn't steak. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't cake. It, it, it wasn't extravagant. Just plain old bread. But you know what? When you're when you're getting from God, a lot of times Sunday after Sunday, service after service, you know what you get? Bread. What did what did eventually the children of Israel say about manna? My soul loatheth this bread. Don't ever loathe that book. Don't, don't ever get tired of it. Don't ever get sick of it. Although in the flesh, I certainly know that we do. But it should always be our diet of choice. In other words, Naomi was now not picky about what she eat. She was picky about where she eat. She was picky, she was picky about being in the right spot to be, uh, to be uh, nurtured by God. Verse 7, Wherefore she went forth out of the place where she was in that, in that ungodly, permissive will of God in that wicked city where she was, and her two daughter-in-laws were with her, and they went on the way to return to the land of Judah. Now, I want you to see, apparently from this verse, they both started out with her. Orpah and, Naomi, uh, and, and Ruth both. But see, one of them is going to leave. You know, a relationship like that, now, uh, I have two daughters-in-law, so I can uh, kind of identify with Naomi now that I've gotten older. I, I, I love them just like my children. I mean, they, they're, they're good wives for my son. Why, why would I not do that? And they were willing to follow her because of that relationship. But it wasn't going to last but for one of them. And you know why? I believe that was the true line. I believe that Naomi, excuse me, Ruth had seen something in Naomi that had left an impression that had made her just stop and think over the years, that, that had got her attention in this 10-year marriage, and now them boys are dead. And, and something about Naomi caught Ruth's eye, but not Orpah. Verse 8, And Naomi said unto her two daughters-in-law, Go, return each to your to her mother's house, the Lord deal kindly with you a, a, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. Now, I want you to notice in a number of things. First of all, Naomi gives us an invitation for them to go back. Now, I used to criticize Naomi because of this, but again, she was ready to get rid of the dead weight. See, son, can you imagine how horrifying it would be, and I've often thought about different situations, not my own family, but things I've heard down through the years from my, my friends, my preacher friends, families, and they finally just had to cut their own children off. How devastating would that be? How difficult would it be to say, no, I just can't have fellowship with you? That's what Naomi was doing. And not only that, she was testing their faith. Whenever, when Abraham was going to offer Isaac, what was God doing? He was testing Abraham's faith. And you know what? I believe if, the, if he had not heard the call, Abraham, Abraham, 
He would have slit Isaac's throat from ear to ear. And the reason why I believe that, not because he was a brave man, but God had given a promise and said, a generation will come out of this man. And I believe he thought if he loses every drop of blood, he's still going to come up again and I'll see my children's children through that. He believed that, and so he was okay with cutting his throat. And so I believe Naomi, in a very similar condition, and inviting them to go back, it was time to, it was time to get real. Either you're with me and you want to be in the will of God, or you don't. Verse 9, the Lord grant you, and you shall find rest, each of you in the house of her husband. And she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. Then and and they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. Again, they were pressing, they were testing her. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Are there yet to be any more sons in my womb? And that that may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters. Go your way. In other words, you go in the nature that you possessed, your way. Now, because of redemption of salvation, I go the best I can in God's way. You know what your way will do? It will wreck you every time. When we go in our way, when you go in your way, without the leadership of God, you'll never get back to that perfect will of God. You'll always be somewhere else. So, you know what Naomi was doing? She was testing them. Seeing who was real and who was what and who wasn't. Now we know Orphan left. You know why? That was her way. And we know Ruth stayed. And you know why? That was her way. She was really the real deal. She was going back to God's will just as much as Naomi was. You wonder if they ever talked about that? Naomi would smile and say, Oh, I remember Israel. I remember living down there. We didn't, have, uh, we didn't have a whole lot financially, but God met with us. I believe, that, I believe that she heard that before, and she was willing to go. So we find two natures of people, Orpah and Ruth, and one of them stays and one of them goes. Now, if you go with me to verse 14, 15, and they said, Behold, uh, verse 14, and they lifted up their voice and wept again, and Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave to her. In other words, she wouldn't let her go. She wouldn't, she wouldn't put that part of her away. And we find Orpah goes back, and Ruth, st and Ruth sticks to the stuff. And she was so committed to being in the will of God that she went she went to work picking up barley seed to give them a little uh, a little bit of a living and then finally by God's grace we find her in the lineage of Christ you know why she got back to the perfect will of God can you imagine what a blessing and an honor it would be to be in the lineage of Christ and the reason she did that, she was right here. She was in the perfect will of God. Took her a long time to get there. We know at least 10 years, because that was the long, and how long they were married. And she got there, and God used her mightily. He used her in an unusual and in a prophetic way. And, and as the years flow by, I believe if I remember correctly, Ruth was either David's great-grandmother or grandmother and um, preserved the line of Christ. See, we, we need to be in the perfect will. Don't settle for anything less. 